Our next speaker is the former Victoria Minister for Multicultural Affairs. Please welcome John Panzopoulos. Excuse me. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations, everyone, for being here. A small group, but a very powerful issue with so many people concerned all around Australia. This law is completely unnecessary. And why is it unnecessary? Because this is a great country made by immigrants. Immigrants that didn't speak much English. Immigrants like my parents. My father helped make Holden cars and worked at a meat pie factory. You can't get more Australia than that. It's migrant workers doing that. Until he died two years ago, he hardly spoke a word of English. Yet he knew how to make a Holden car and a meat pie. My mother sewed business shirts and track suits for the workers and the office workers of Australia. That's what migrants do. You don't need English to do these things. It's why they invited them to be here in the first place. This is totally unnecessary and it's done for certain other reasons. It's beating the racist drum. So this is racist. Let's put it simply as it is. And those that are not Anglo-Saxon know racism when we see it in front of us. Right? They know it when we see it in front of us. Why is it racist? What makes something racist? When you apply a rule for some part of the community and it's not applied to another part of the community. I've heard many speeches of par in Parliament. I used to be a member of Parliament in this place for 22 years. I've heard many speeches in Parliament that were not very eloquent. We don't have an English language standard for members of Parliament. It's totally unnecessary. It's racist. And the point is that what some people in Canberra don't understand is that we are, as we play the racist card, we send the wrong message to so many others. We're a trading nation that trades with the world. We are a country that our biggest services export is international students. Our second biggest in international service export is international tourism. People come and trade with this country because they've seen it as a powerful, multicultural, welcoming country. If you start b banging the racism card, the rest of the world is not dumb. The rest of the world is not dumb. So this works against Australia's not only social interests, but also against their economic interests. And third, this is unnecessary because it's insulting. It's insulting to everyone that's made Australia their home. It's insulting to all those, in, in my 27 years of public life, there are probably 10,000 people that I witness being coming Australian citizens. It's like we're telling all those people that you came along here, but you're not good enough. And it's insulting, not only to those that we welcome as refugees, suddenly saying, live in this country, but you know what? You're never gonna pass this English language test, this university entrance level English language test, so you will never become an Australian citizen. It's insulting to them. It's insulting to people who come here on partner's visas, like my wife. I'm, I'm remarried. My wife speaks five languages. She, doesn't, she also speaks and teaches English, but she speaks five languages. And like she tells me, do I really want to become an Australian? I can live here anyway. But, you know, they just insult me. So we're insulting people. The other thing is that people that are coming here as skilled migrants already require an English language standard that, that they've been assessed on. And it's insulting to them because one thing that a lot of people forget about is that, that these same skilled migrants that have been given permanent residency in Australia, that have been assessed on their English language standards, are going to have to sit another test. Why do they have to sit another test for something that they've already been approved on? It is insulting. Again, it's insulting. This will damage, if this law passes, this will damage the cohesion we have in Australia. You'll often hear Dutton talk about other countries and how long it takes to become a citizen. I do not see them as successful multicultural countries. For me, as someone that's practiced multiculturalism for 30 years, that's why I got involved in politics. That's why when I was multicultural minister in the two terms of the Brax government, we wanted to strengthen multiculturalism. We created the first multicultural law in Australia, the Multicultural Victoria Act, 
that now has been emulated by many other states and should become a national law as well, a multicultural Australia law. And if we had that, we wouldn't be getting this sort of racist rubbish legislation in the first place. Second, we passed a racial religious tolerance law, which has also now been taken up by most other states for exactly the same reason, to build cohesion. The countries that we often quote, and often in Europe, they are not the most successful multicultural countries. They've got problems because they've created two classes of citizens. Those that were born in those countries and those that were born outside of those countries. And whilst, whilst they are very liberal in many other ways, places like Germany and France and the UK, they have failed because they have failed to make people citizens. The success of Australia has been that someone becomes a citizen very quickly after they get given permanent residency. This has been the success of Australia very quickly. And why is that? Because that same person knows that genuinely this country welcomes them by extending very quickly citizenship rights. That's why we should oppose this law. Thank you very much for being vocal. Get angry, get organised, that's what we need to do. And thanks to those politicians that are here like Mark Dreyfus and Peter Khalil and, and Nina Springle that are supporting the cause. Good on you. Thanks, John, for your supportive speech.